Welcome to Scrolling to Death. I just got off the line with Senator Ted Cruz. I'm excited to bring you our conversation. Senator Cruz is a dad of a 13-year-old and 16-year-old girl, and they are in the midst of all of this struggle around social media use. And I appreciate that Senator Cruz was able to give some specific advice regarding his family's approach to social media, in addition to talking about some important federal legislation that we can get enacted to protect our children online. We just have to use our voices as parents and reach out to our representatives in the House and the Senate and tell them what bills we support so that they can co-sponsor them and push them for a vote. So please enjoy my conversation with Senator Ted Cruz about keeping our kids safe online. You, Senator Cruz, have been a warrior in this fight for kids' online safety. I've watched a lot of the hearings. I've seen you go at these big tech CEOs. Uh, I know that you have met some of the parents that I've interviewed, parents who have lost children to online harms, like Maureen Molak from your home state of Texas. And you know, Maureen's son, David, died in 2016, and nothing has changed. Kids keep getting harmed. No federal legislation has passed to protect children online. So can you explain to listeners why is this, Senator Cruz? Why, why has nothing passed? Well, un- unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, inertia in Congress. We, we have had powerful forces and, and big tech lobbying yeah. uh, fighting against legislation passing. And and the good news is that the Senate was able to take up uh, two bills, uh, mm-hmm. COSA and 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 COPPA 2.0, and the Senate was able to pass them out. I'm hopeful that the House will take them up and pass them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of those bills, I think, are are significant steps forward in in terms of protecting kids online. And 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 you know, I'll say Maureen and 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 other parents like her have been just just in incredible warriors standing up and fighting for their kids. And, and yeah. it, it, in my experience, every parent who, who has teenagers or, or even adolescents mm-hmm. uh, is, is worried, is, is frightened uh, about phones and social media and, and all, of the, all of the pressures that, that come from kids online. And whether it is online predators who are targeting our kids or whether it is big tech companies that that monetize pushing horrible content to our kids uh, mm-hmm. and and trying to get them addicted to to content that that is incredibly uh, dangerous. Every parent I know is concerned, and so I have been fighting for a long time to to give parents additional tools to to create mm-hmm. a, a stronger legal framework to, to to keep our kids safe. Yeah, and we can really feel that support. And I want to rally parents behind some of the bills that you're supporting. But can we back up just briefly to January 31st of this year? Uh, five big tech CEOs from X, Discord, TikTok, Snap, and Meta sat in front of you in Congress to testify to the failures of their platforms in protecting children. And what you presented was definitely the most shocking moment of the hearing for many viewers. Uh, can you speak to the failures of Meta specifically in removing child child sexual abuse material on their platforms? Well, it was really quite striking because uh, if someone went on on Meta, someone went on Facebook and and searched for child pornography, sexual abuse materials, you would get a warning screen Mm -hmm. that says it appears you are uh, you're searching for child sexual abuse materials. Do you want to continue? And it gave them an option of, yes, please show me this. (laughs) <laughs> and, and it and it really was stunning, and 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 so I cross examined Mark Zuckerberg, and I, I said, "What the hell are you doing? What do you mean? Yes, I'd like to see child abuse materials and and sexually exploitive videos and pictures." And 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 you know, I asked, "Okay, how many people clicked yes? What did you do with those people? Did mm-hmm. you refer them to law enforcement? Did you investigate them? What did you do with the kids who were the targets of 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 these videos? Did you remove the material? Did you did you do anything?" And he had absolutely no satisfactory answers to any of those questions wow. um, other than to say that they now respond differently. And, and, and he claimed at least that they, they no longer give that option, but they did for, for many months. And, you know, they did not step forward and take any responsibility for the abusers that were using, using their site to access incredibly harmful material and material that that you know when you're dealing with 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 photographs or videos or other materials of of children being abused 
they're not just victimized one time when, when that material is created, but they're victimized every time uh, a pedophile accesses those images over and over and over again. And, and big tech collectively has been really terrible in, in fighting back against it. And I think they, they, they see a whole lot of money in, in maximizing users yeah. almost no matter what. Why do you think Meta would refuse to f- remove that CSAM? I mean, they're I- identifying it, but why wouldn't they want to remove it? I don't know. Uh, I, I certainly know Mark Zuckerberg gave no satisfactory answer. Okay. You know, it's it's a broader problem. It's one of the reasons, I mean, I've introduced multiple different pieces of legislation. So, for example, I've introduced a bill called the Take It Down Act. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Take it, the Take It Down Act deals with non-consensual intimate images and, and really two different kinds. One, real images. And, and that typically occurs when you have, for example, uh, two romantic partners who, who take pictures or videos of each other in intimate circumstances and then there's a breakup and and Mm. one or the other is angry or upset and decides to post that for the world to get back at the person they're mad at and and that uh that's a gross violation of privacy if if if, even if the the pictures or videos were taken with consent if you didn't consent to have them published for the world uh that, that that is is incredibly cruel and incredibly harmful Mm-hmm. And then there's a second iteration of it, which which it in some ways may even be worse, which is we are seeing more and more the rise of deep fake non-consensual intimate images. And it's now not difficult at all for someone to take innocuous pictures, often of a child, of a teenager on social media in in perfectly normal circumstances and, and use A.I., to create deep fakes that that to any observer appear to be real uh, nude pictures or or explicit sexual videos of that person, but they're entirely fake. And this phenomenon, we are seeing it exploding at at, at a massive level. Uh, over ninety percent of the non-consensual intimate images target women and target target teenage girls, mm-hmm. and we're seeing this pattern of victimization. Repeatedly, and so the Take It Down Act does a couple of things. Number one, it makes it a crime, makes it a felony mm-hmm. to to publish or to post non-consensual intimate images. But number two, every bit as important, it creates a legal requirement that any tech platform must remove those images or remove those videos within four, 48 hours of being notified mm-hmm. by the victim that that is non-consensual mm-hmm. intimate imagery. Right now. There's no legal requirement to do so, and and big tech has a terrible record uh, of taking these images down. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that this is so incessant because just this morning I reported on Meta is running ads for Nudify apps on Instagram and Facebook. So profiting, it's just shocking. In addition to ads for illicit drugs and fake driver's licenses and a bunch of other illegal things. But uh, I'd be happy to follow up with the screenshots of those ads with your team. But this- Please, I, I, would, I would love to get those those specific ads and, and we'll follow up on them because this is, as I said, it is growing exponentially. So a couple of months ago, I chaired a field hearing on, on the Take It Down Act and, and chaired it in, in Dallas. And we had testimony from two teenage girls, both 15, both of whom had experienced almost the identical uh, violation, which is one of them from Texas, uh, mm-hmm. a, a young 15-year-old girl named Ellison Berry. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a freshman in high school and, and some boys in her high school took images from her social media used AI to create deep fake naked pictures of her and then sent them mm-hmm. to her classmates. And so she woke up in the morning with the kids at the high school, all thinking that they had had naked pictures of her. And if you could imagine the trauma, yeah. uh, it's hard enough being a teenager and, and all the pressures on, on teenagers, especially teenage girls. But mm-hmm. then having that happen, and, and we had uh, uh, another 15-year-old girl in New Jersey who had the identical thing happen to her. So both of them testified at the hearing. Mm-hmm. And and this is occurring more and more and more. And I'll tell you an amazing thing about Ellison. She's a very brave young lady. Yeah. She Before the hearing, I, I sat down and visited with, with her and with her mother in my office. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I asked her at the time, I said, tell me, are the, are the images still up? She mm-hmm. said, yes, they've been on, they've been on Snapchat for nine months. And she said, and her mother said they had been calling, they'd been emailed, they'd been trying to get Snapchat <laughs> to pull them down and they could get nowhere with it. Mm-hmm. And, and so I turned to my team, I said, get on the phone with Snapchat right now. Mm-hmm. They need to have these images down today. And I said, if need be, put me on the telephone with their CEO. We're going to get these taken down. Within a couple of hours, they were pulled down. You know what, Nikki? A, a kid should not have to have a sitting U.S. senator make a phone call on their behalf to have the images pulled down. It is ridiculous that they wouldn't do so the instant they knew about them instead of waiting nine months and taking t- taking the involvement uh, of a member of the Senate. Yeah. Okay, so this is urgent, and we need legislation to force them to do that. And so how can parents support, how can parents support the Take It Down Act? Well, the Take It Down Act has, has passed the Senate Commerce Committee, and it passed unanimously. And so we had a markup, and so it is now uh, on the floor of the Senate. And, and I'm going to push and try to pass it this year, and I'm hopeful that mm-hmm. we can get it passed this year. We have we have a bipartisan group of, of sponsors. We have 17 co-sponsors. We have Democrats and Republicans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 it, and it's a wide-ranging group of, uh, of sponsors that we brought together. And so speaking out, reaching out to your senators and your House members and saying, look, this bill is important. You should pass it. Uh, that's very beneficial. And, and, and as I said, I am pushing, I, I hope that the Senate takes it up and passes it this year. Chuck Schumer controls the Senate floor. So it is not entirely with, within my control whether the Senate will take it up or not. But we have passed it out of the Commerce Committee. So it's now on the floor and available for Schumer to move. And I'm going to keep pressing. OK, so if parents are uh, getting their senators to co-sponsor, that is helpful to getting it put up for a vote. That's very helpful. As I said, we have 17 co-sponsors right now, but the more that come on board, the the, the better. In the House, there's a companion bill that Representative Salazar from Florida uh, has introduced. And so we've got versions in, 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 in both chambers that, that are identical, and we're, we're trying to move them forward. Okay. Amazing. Uh, I want to get one thought on COSA, too. So uh, you recently voted yes on COSA, along with 91 other senators. Why do you support COSA as a means to protect children online? It adds the tools to stop predators, to stop those who want to harm our kids, it, 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 it puts an obligation on big tech to try to prevent that exploitation. And it, it enhances their liability. It creates uh, greater responsibility on the part of big tech. And, and we need, we need a, additional tools on that front. I'll, I'll note there's, there's one other bill mm-hmm. that, uh, that, that I've introduced and that I'm pressing and I want to get passed, and it's called the, the Kids Off Social Media Act or, or COSMA. Okay. Um, somehow, somehow these bills, we need to work on the acronyms because I think all the acronyms are lousy, but, but they are what they are. But the Kids Off Social Media Act, this is bipartisan legislation that, that, that I've introduced along with Brian Schatz, who's a Democrat from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And, and what our bill does is, is three different things. Number one, it prohibits any children under 13 from being on social media. And, and mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason on earth for an eight-year-old to be, to be on Snapchat and the pressures that the, the, a young child, I, I don't think, is emotionally equipped to deal with with the, the 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 pressures and the threats that are on social media. So that's one component of it. Great. A second component of, of the legislation prohibits the tech companies from using algorithmic boosting. Mm-hmm. For any children under 17, and and so if if you're dealing with a teenager right now, big tech put pushes all sorts of harmful content, whether it is substance abuse or alcohol abuse, whether it is self harm and and suicidal ideation, or or, or or whether it is body image issues, which particularly teenage girls get targeted with that. We see it, the horrifying statistics about the rates of depression, the rates of attempted suicide from what is pushed on, on social media. And so this says th- that big tech cannot use algorithmic boosting to push that content at, at teenagers under 17. Yeah, great. And, th- and then the third element of the bill is, is, is another bill that I had introduced separately that we combined that was called the Eyes on the Board bill. 
mm-hmm. that requires any school that receives federal funding, which is pretty much any public school, mm-hmm. uh, to block social media on campus. And and in my view, there's no reason for you to be on, on Facebook or, or Snapchat or whatever while you're in math class. You ought to be paying attention to the teacher. You ought to be in class. And, and so it, it requires schools to block social media on campus using the campus Wi-Fi. Amazing, Senator Cruz. And that is a problem even when, you know, phones are getting banned in schools, but kids are still accessing social media on their school-issued devices and getting inappropriate things. So I love all of that. And I encourage parents who are listening to contact their uh, representatives and their senators, ask them to co-sponsor the Take It Down Act, the Kids Off Social Media Act. And then also we need to put pressure on the House around COSA. You have two young children and knowing what you know about these platforms. How are you handling social media in your home? Do you have any advice for parents, given that we don't have any federal protections in place currently? Look, it's, it's really hard. Our, our daughters are 13 and 16. And as I said, every parent I know of teenagers struggles with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heidi and I have tried to have different rules, but the difficulty is, I mean, you could say, okay, we'll just keep them off all devices. Well, that's very hard to do with a teenager. Yeah. particularly when every other classmate of theirs is on the devices and all of their social life is on the devices, that no parent wants to ostracize your child. You don't want to lock them out of having friends and engagement with their classmates. Mm-hmm. And and so it's a collective action problem where all the parents hate it, but but none of them want to to harm their kids. And, and so Oh, look, the, the only advice I know as a parent is to try to be as involved as possible. And I know a lot of parents who feel frustrated and ill-equipped that, 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 that they don't understand it well enough to be engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, a rule that Heidi and I had uh, for, for a long time is we had in our bedroom a charging station that we would require our daughter's phones to be plugged in on the charging station in the master bedroom and not in their rooms at night. And, and just mm-hmm. under the, the, the notion that that Look, bad things can happen during the day, but worse things happen at night, typically. And and, and I think that was a, a a very sound rule. I think as you get older, it, it it is less less justified. But certainly, as you have younger teens, I think that is a rule that makes a lot of sense, so that you at least have some some guardrails to try to protect them. But but even that, it, it is still it, it's still difficult, and you just have to work at it every day. Thank you for that. And I think that probably that number one advice of not having it in their bedrooms at night is super important. Kids are more vulnerable at at night when they're tired and they make worse decisions. And you're not there to look over their shoulder or check in on them. And so thank you for that really important advice. And thank you for your time today. On behalf of parents, Senator Cruz, thank you for not giving in to big tech pressures. I know how much they spend on lobbying legislators and I know how convincing they can be. And I appreciate that you're putting kids first. And I, I thank you on behalf of parents. Well, thank you, Nikki. And thank you for speaking out. Thank you for being a voice for so many kids, for so many teenagers. I mean, look, when you and I were kids, it's it's hard to be a teenager just at any time in life. Your your world is changing. You have hormones. You're becoming an adult. You've got peer pressure. I mean, it's, but to add the additional challenge of the world of social media and big tech and the things our kids are exposed to things that, that you and I, when we were teenagers, we, we, we never encountered. No. And, and so thank you for being, for being a champion for kids. It is really needed, especially right now. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.